Howdy folks, welcome back to another in the series of Period 6's Gold Mining and Gold Geology 101 series. Today, exciting episode on measurements and gold mining and mining in general. Not really exciting subject, but it's a good basic um, introduction to some of the things we'll be looking at in further episodes. So I think it's kind of a good idea to have it up here in the front. Um, this is also going to touch on a little bit, you know, how important is mining in our lives? Pretty much, if you don't grow it in the ground as a crop, it comes out of mining. Um, gold, no gold, you don't have GPS, you don't have your cell phone, you don't have your computer, you don't have your television, more than likely. Your SIM card, pull it out of the back of your phone, there's a little coat of gold on that for the contact. Um, you don't have nuclear power, you don't have wind power, you don't have well, pretty much a lot of power. Um, copper, obviously, is also important, but gold plays an importance uh, beyond measure. No GPS without gold. Now, as far as dollar value, um, there's six major metal commodities that take up a huge percentage, um, to a degree. Um, you can take aluminum, copper, gold, uh, what's the other ones? Copper, gold, zinc, nickel, and iron. Those six elements make up six tenths of every penny of every dollar in the world's global economy. And that seemed like a really small portion of it. We're talking about trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars, tens of trillions of dollars in the world's economy. And those six elements by themselves make up a huge portion of that. Um, so how common is there something like gold and silver and copper, for example? Um, gold, silver, and copper, platinum, pretty much every naturally occurring element is in any given rock in the world. Um, it might be only a few atoms of that, so it's obviously not any way economical to pull that gold out and process it to get it to extract it for, uh, for use. Um, so that gold has to be upgraded. The concentration has become much more dense for us to find an economic grade, or what's known as the uh, ore grade. Ore grade in this case is a measurement in which it's economically feasible to mine the ore, pull it out, and then process the resulting rock for the final product we've got here. You can have grades, um, you can have depth being prohibitive, you can have capital cost, you can find a way to get over capital cost. But depending on your density of gold and the volume of rock, that determines how economically viable the, um, the ore deposit really is. So let's talk about size in deposits and size in gold and kind of get an idea of what that looks like. I'm gonna start over here with this, this papoose I built for you. It's kind of hard to see, I'm kidding. It's kind of hard to get a grasp of this, but this is a box that's 28 and a half inches on a side. So it's less than the cubic yard. So we got 28 and a half inches. What this represents is one ton of quartz rock in the ground unbroken. This would be like in the mine, Gold Mountain, uh, Green Mountain rather. We go in there, you look at a piece of rock out of the side, pull it out this size, it weighs a ton. Um, if you, which is kind of funny to look at too, if you take this 28 and a half and expand that to 36 inches, so you have a, a 36 inch square cube, you're then looking at two tons of quartz in place. Because if you're looking at length times width times height, it expands out 36 inches and now two tons. Now what's kind of funny is when you blast that one ton of rock out, this 28 and a half inch cube out of the wall rock, blast it out, that's known as run of mine. Or uh, just been blasted out, no secondary processing. Generally, that lump quartz then will occupy a square yard. So we're acting that 36 inch square again. So one ton of broken quartz occupies the same space as two tons of quartz in place. All right, so if we're looking at a ton of quartz, let's look at a ton of gold. This little guy right here. This box is 14.7 or 14.75 inches on a side. Um, small cube, based on the density of gold being 19.1 of a specific gravity. Um, this is what a ton of gold looks like right here. This little path boost right there. One ton of gold inside of 14 and a half inches, give or take. So if this is a ton, what does a gram of gold look like? Well, a gram of gold I don't have that's really usable, that works for us. I do have a gram of lead, which you maybe see there. If you make this little gram into a sphere, that will fit inside of Lincoln's head on a penny, um, which is kind of in a dark way how Lincoln no longer came to be. He was getting lead inside of his head. 
wasn't that good of a play for him, rather. Um, anyway, this is what uh, a gram of lead would look like. Now, another way to visualize a gram is if you take a package of sweet and low. Whoa, here we go. Sweet and low. A sweet and low package contains one gram of material. Uh, take one open, throw it in your tea, you see a gram there. I measured this on my couple of these on my scale that goes out to one thousandth of a gram, so 0. 0.00 of a gram. And this comes in with like two one thousandths, generally speaking, so it's pretty close to right on the gram for base measurement. So you got this as a little bitty gram. You should be able to fit one million of these inside of this space. Now, with the fact that lead's a little bit less dense than gold, even though they're only a couple protons apart in the periodic table, um, a box of lead that's a ton, I think it's actually like an inch bigger than this on the side. That's kind of a general response. You know, if you had a ton of gold, you can fit it well within a ton of granite, I mean, a ton of quartz, and come out with extra space to spare. Let's move these little guys out of the way then. So, what is the abundance of gold in the ground, generally speaking? Um, your background crustal abundance is what that's known as. How much gold there is, we spread it out all over the world in equal abundance there. Um, gold will be at 0 0.004 parts per million. So we got that spot there. You got silver, I think comes in at 0 0.07 grand, uh, parts per million. Copper at 55 parts per million. So copper is actually um, 55 grams per ton is what you see as a background crustal abundance. So it's fairly common. Um, platinum, 0 0.005. Now the cutoff grade for most gold, except for like carlin deposits and really large heat leak projects, um, is gonna be about a half a gram per ton, give or take. So take one half of this little fellow right here, split them up into half, then speckle them within this quartz ton right here. So you can see how if you've got a half gram per ton, a couple grams per ton, it can get lost easily in this, break it down to a rock this size, and you might never see that. Um, there's a great little video series that I can't remember the name of the guy who does them in Australia. And he's talking to a geologist down there in one of their large mines and the guy's talking, he goes, yeah, we have mines here that you know, miners have never seen gold, ever. And they're talking in ounces per ton. Now the way that happens is it's kind of twofold. One, you can have gold spread out in a very large volume that's kind of hidden in other minerals. Um, and that's called solid, in, hold in solid state. So if gold is held in solid state, it can actually be surrounded by iron crystals, it can be surrounded by arsenic, pyrite, arsenic, uh, general pyrite, chalcopyrite, can be encapsulated in the gold. So you can't see it until you grind it down and either roast it or pull it out, um, get rid of the other stuff surrounding it so your cyanide can pull that gold into solution, which you can then further process to get the gold out into solids. So you can have gold hidden, you just can't see. But back to the point. Gold sitting at 0.004 parts per million exceptionally diffuse. You need to get that upgraded about 100 to 125 times background crustal abundance to make it valuable. Um, that's when you start getting into the economic grades that you can actually mine out. Um, for us in our mine, uh, for small miners usually you don't want to go too much below three quarter of an ounce um, depending on how it's distributed in the rock. Hard Rock University, um, Keith Bowen has a great video on how to figure out economic viability of a mine. It can show you that, you know, if you have an ounce and a half per ton in a vein, in a very narrow vein, it still might not be, or still can be, completely uneconomic to mine for a small scale miner. Um, then again, you look at carlin type deposits in Nevada, um, Alaska, China's got some, Argentina have carlin deposits. Those can be mined open pit at 0.2 grams per ton. So two tenths of this little fella right here will be economic to mine in a carlin deposit. Now this is simply because it's highly, we won't get into it. It's just economic, put it that way. So we know what size a gram looks like. Um, we know that needs to be upgraded about 100 to 125 times for gold. Silver needs to be upgraded about 7,000 times to average crustal abundance to get to where it's economic just because it's lower value, because uh, it's more common. And then, we look at these cubes. So what is a what does a gold mine look like? What size are we talking about here? Now there's multiple levels of mine, mining companies in the world. Um, you have the big giants. You've got Barrick, which I think is still the biggest in the world. Barrick, Gold Corp, uh, Rio Tinto, Anglo Ashante. Now, there's a bunch of them. Go look on the internet. Oh, uh, you can find the big gold companies. Those are the majors. 
right below that you have the juniors. Um, the junior companies are or a lot of the companies you'll see in penny stocks um, being traded here and there. Those companies generally will have a cutoff of a million tons. Um, if you don't have a million tons of ore in place, it's not worth it for the capital cost, the setup, and everything else. Um, think about how people lament the fact when you go to the hospital, you get charged two dollars for a Tylenol, a single Tylenol. Well, that Tylenol is not carrying the cost of the Tylenol; it's carrying the cost of the building infrastructure in that host hospital, electrical usage, AC, janitorial staff. All that is built into that Tylenol cost to ensure the operation of the hospital. Same way with the ore deposit. A million tons, which is about a cube, 245 foot on the sides, it's almost 250 foot on the sides, about a million tons. That's gotta pay for the, and nobody pays you to go out and search for gold. Unless you've got it, you're not getting paid for it. So all the prospecting, the geochemical data you have to pick up, the IR, all the geology you need to figure out, infrastructure development, transport costs, water costs, water rights costs, reclamation, um, all the equipment you need to pull it out, to process it and get it to your final final spot or recovery or to the refiner. All that has to be factored into your size of your mineral deposit. So generally a million tons, you can make that work. At a half gram or above, million tons, you're in a good spot if you're a junior company. And little guys like us, um, like me, period six, uh, Keith is also another small scale miner, we can deal with smaller scale deposits than that because we don't have the operations costs we need to. We're not looking for, you know, I can spend 50 bucks in gas and go look at five mines because I'm looking at mines that were possibly missed or mines that are still ready to open, like the Green Mountain Mine, for example. Um, I do have about, geez, 65 other ones I want to hit at some point in time, so there's a lot of them out there, but they're small mines. You give me 50,000 tons. I am a happy camper. Uh, 50,000 tons at one ounce per ton. Um, I'm in good shape. I'm in really good shape, as a matter of fact. I'm looking at a couple, you know, millions and millions of dollars. Example, this little one ton right here, this little guy right here, million grams. Um, gold's going for 12.85, I wanna say right now. This block is worth a little over $40 million, about 41, $42 million is what this would be worth. A little bitty block here, a million grams at 41, 42 a gram, what we're looking at right now, as far as economic value. Um, so how big do deposits get? Um, if you wanna look at a huge deposit from space, go look up on Google Earth, uh, look at the Bingham Canyon, Utah. It's also known as the Kennecott Cor Copper Corporation. Um, their open pit there, I wanna say, is almost three miles wide by about, it's almost three miles square, as a matter of fact. It's diameter, about three miles in diameter, it's about three quarters of a mile deep. Huge deposit overall, copper and gold. Now take that deposit and compare it to the Central Rand, the West Rand, Transvaal area in South Africa. That deposit is 150 kilometers or 75 miles one way by about 40 miles the other way. So those are huge, huge deposits. I've actually never seen um, the Transvaal area actually broken down to have what volume it's got there. That's that area produces about 40% of the world's gold that's ever been produced, came from that one area. Um, but Bingham Canyon, huge. It's a porphyry type of deposit. We'll get into that when we get into our um, types of gold deposits here in the future. But a porphyry deposit generally has a low grade, but it's big. Those are measured in billions of tons. Um, I think Bingham was in the 15 billion ton range. Another large one, um, Grassberg and Erzberg. I have that video up on the page as well. That was a porphyry scarn deposit, very, very large deposit. And you can see what kind of uh, work they had to do to get that gold and copper out of that, what they had to build up there. When you're looking, when you're talking about starting off with bulldozers on hilltops that are only about this big, wide in the front, scrape the top off to start building a road, it takes a little bit of time um, and input there. So really, uh, gold deposits can be monsters for juniors compared to what we look at. Our mines can be fairly small and significant to them, um, and they can develop into be bigger ones. You just don't know. Uh, so that's pretty much it for today. Just talking about sizes and measurements. That's it for now. Uh, we'll get into some of the uh, geology here pretty soon. I've got my square set model pretty much all set and ready to go, so I can kind of explain that. Looking for a couple more photos online. We'll be done. Until next time, have a good one, folks. Bye-bye.